Hello everyone. Welcome to another edition of Watches and Whiskey. That was so bad. Hello everyone and welcome <laughs> to another edition of Watches and Whiskey. Okay, good enough. <laughs> anyway, guys, I promise you and I mentioned I uh, briefly mentioned in uh, a couple of my previous videos that we're actually going to take an actual Rolex AD, bring him in here and interview him. It wasn't me that interviewed him, it was actually Adrian. Obviously we blurred the guy out and changed his voice up and so on and so forth to ensure privacy. But we asked him a bunch of basic questions like, you know, what's your cost on all these models? Do you actually sell hype models to clients? All these questions that you guys always wanted to know the answers to. So Adrian sat with him and did a quick interview. This is how it went. For obvious confidentiality and privacy reasons, we're not gonna say your, say your name, so I'm just gonna call you A.D. Jones. A.D. Jones, that's what they call me at the office. Well, so our viewers, as well as myself, obviously have a lot of questions for you. What exactly is your cost off of retail on Damn. Rolex models? Oh. I'm coming in strong, but we just have to know. Unofficially, my uh, price is 37 off the retail. Which, which is a great profit margin in comparison to what we do in Rolex, but I think we move much more volume, plus you have a lot of you have carrying costs with marketing, with, with all the overhead that you have. I have restrictions that you won't even think about. Right, I got you, I got you. So you can't like order in something? I can order anything I want. But, the, but the, does that, that affect, affect your allocation? Like, let's say you get, how many pieces do you get per year? Let's say 2019 versus 2020, because I know production was cut in 2020 due to the pandemic. Yes. 2019, we got probably around a thousand pieces throughout the year. Okay. 2020 was a lot less. We we're a little bit more than half that. You know, so obviously production was cut, the allocation was cut, everything that we actually wanted, we didn't get. Yet the man was through the roof in 2020. More than you've ever seen it before. Yeah. I mean, this I was the that. year for us to have killed it beyond a reasonable doubt, and unfortunately, we, you know weren't able to, to do that. Every time I walk into your boutique or store, whatever you want to call it, there's nothing in the showcases. To be honest, I mean, again, last year, 2020, we didn't really have that much. I mean, we had some of the standard models that nobody really wants. The really hot pieces, you know, that we did ask for, that we were allocated, right away they went to the people that have done business with us in the past, people that we know are not going to flip this. I mean, yeah, there were probably a couple pieces that went to flippers, you know, Margin was there, made sense, but um, we don't have as much of the hot models that everybody's looking for, obviously because of demand, obviously because of production cuts. So we're only showing what we have. Which brings me back to, to one point that you just mentioned, flippers. Can you smell a flipper from a mile away? Like what are the telltale signs of somebody walking in your store and wanting to flip a watch, let's say? I wish I could say that I can, but I can't. I mean, these days, a 16-year-old kid could be walking in with a pair of Yeezys and, you know, a Rolex already on and buying it for himself. You know, somebody else, a 40-year-old gentleman can be buying a watch to sell it on Chrono 24. You really never know. The only time I know for a fact that the person's not a flipper is if somebody that I've done business with in the past, a loyal customer that comes back on and on and is buying a piece for his wife or is buying a piece for a relative or he's upgrading, you know, one of his watches. Or referrals, I would imagine, as well, from your, from your clients. <sighs> referrals are tricky. You know, because again, just because somebody's referred by somebody that's trustworthy doesn't mean the buyer himself is going to end up being, you know, honest about the fact that this is a watch for himself. True, I got you. Um, so for all those f flipping pieces, I, I you know, I, I know from a fact from any Rolex store that I've been in in the past, let's say, two years, whether I'm on vacation, whether it's local or wherever it may be, that there's really nothing that, for the most part, is in the store that I want to pay retail for that, and I know I can, I can flip it because. Where are those pieces? Are they in your safe? Are they all sold out? Like, what's, what's, what's going on there? Because I know you're getting inventory, but as it comes in, it doesn't go in a showcase. There's no reason to tease people walking in the store, you know, by putting out the hottest sports models. It just doesn't make sense. I'm going to have to tell them to their face, I'm sorry, I can't sell it to you, and look like an asshole by selling it to one of my previous customers. So a lot of those pieces, when they come in, yes, they sit in the back of the safe. Some of them we're holding because we see what the market is doing. We see where it's going. So we're keeping them, you know, sitting on them for a couple months to see how much more you know we'll be able to sell them for. Others are going to, like I said, our previous customers, our loyal customers. Every once in a while, you know, one goes to a, a gray market dealer. So back to your point right there, you said you hold on to some of the product to see if you can get more for it. Therefore, it's probably gonna be over retail. So do you sell watches over retail? No, we do not sell any watches over retail. If you wanna buy a piece that Retail price is 12.9, market price is 22. I will sell that watch to you at 
You're going to package it with something. However, <laughs> you're going to buy three or four other watches that nobody really wants. I mean, that's fair. That's kind of the same play to AP or Richard Mille Paddock. A lot of these vendors do right now. Ferrari, Hermes. I mean, Hermes, I walked in with my wife. They made me have to uh, buy a towel and a plate in order to, to get on the list for a Kelly bag, which is crazy. But again, that's, that's, the, that's the business that we're in. The list. And again, you know, a lot of people talking about the list. You know, it's That goddamn list. There is no official list. You're not registering on a Rolex website, you know, standing in line. You get a number, you know, now serving number 464. The list is a way to, I guess, hold you off, to not completely tell you, you are not getting this watch. However, I do have people that are on our list that we do contact every once in a while. Hey, guess what? That watch you've been waiting for, we have it. And why that builds a relationship with these people. These are the people that came in, they waited, you know, they, they want this watch. This is not a flipper. You know, typically, it's not a flipper. This is somebody that's going to wear this watch every single day and love it. So the fact that they got a phone call from me and they're rushing over to my store to buy it, that sort of happiness, that sort of like loyalty, you can't build, you know, by just flipping them through the back door. Totally understand. And that wait list, I would be curious to know if you could just kind of give me a ballpark number. How many people are on a wait list for a stainless steel Daytona? That list is built by people that have done business with us in okay. the past. People that have come in and bought models that typically, you know, we don't have a wait list for. We don't have people bum rushing the door to buy. So if you came in and you bought a couple of, you know, OPs and, you know, something for your kids, something for your relatives, and you said, hey, by the way, you know, if you ever get a stainless steel Daytona, please let me know. I'd love to buy it. That person might make, a, make it so, a list. So, so th that's basically what you're saying is, is the correct approach. Take me out on a date. Buy me dinner. That's right. <laughs> Good way to put it. So basically, establish a history with, with your AD, buy a few things, um, and then that, that's basically the play right now. That's really it, because then you'll actually get on my list. And that list is in my head. I'm thinking, hey, I just got this. I remember Bob. Bob really wanted one. Bob spent some money with me. He's not trying to flip this. He's not looking for all the hottest models. This is just the watch that he's wanted for the last, you know, four years. Let me give Bob a call and sell him this watch. Yeah, so that being said, I, I'm Adrian, and I'm waiting for my Green Dial Daytona to come in. So you yeah, you're never getting that. Yeah. Are there any discounted pieces? Are there any pieces that you discount? Yes. Uh, officially, we do have the ability to discount up to 10%, you know, on certain models. And again, it falls into that same pool of people coming in, buying multiple products or, you know, multiple models of watches, or they might buy something else in my store. I'm not just an AD for Rolex, I'm AD for other brands. Right. They might pick up a couple of other brands and, you know, I'll give them a discount on a watch that they want to watch that clearly I've shown in the showcase. If it's in the showcase, it's ready for sale. So you're telling me like a diamond bracelet, uh, multi-gem color Pearl Master, you'll give me 10% on? No, not on that one. I'll give, <laughs> a, I'll give you 10% off on Really? It. You won't give me 10% off that one? No. Oh my God. No, that one I won't give you 10% off. Again, you're buying a couple of Tudors, you're buying a couple of Omegas, you're buying a couple of Hamiltons, you know, you'll get 10% off something. Yeah, it's funny. I have, I have actually clients that come to me almost as if I'm, I'm an AD and I have some magic wand I can wave around and get, because I used to be able to get them discounts. I used to be able to get them like 25% on offshores. I had somebody say, can you put me on the list for a blue sky dweller? I'm like, what? It's the same thing. You'll make money on one watch, you'll lose money on another, but yeah. overall, you'll be in, uh, in the green. Right, right. So let me ask you this question. How did you start out as a Rolex AD? What, what is the process to, to, I guess, get a dealership? Because as I understand, it's, it's like pretty much hitting the lottery today. It's not really hitting the lottery and it's not easy. You don't start out as an AD. You start out with a watch store. I mean, that's what you want to do, whether you're a watchmaker, whether you come from a family of watchmakers, whether that's just your passion. I want to sell watches for a living. You start out with obviously the smaller brands. I mean, my, my first, you know, brand where I was an AD for was Baum and Mercier. Who buys Baum and Mercier watches these days? At retail. Not many. At retail. Yeah. yeah. Not many. You know, after that, we moved on. We, you know, we got Seiko, we got Longine. You know, these were the foundation to us being able to apply for and ultimately receive a Rolex authorized dealer approval. I, I, from what I from what I heard, uh, there has to be like almost a certain square mile radius from one store to the next. Correct. Although no. when it, when you go to Hong Kong, there's a freaking Rolex boutique on every single corner. So I, I guess things work different. In Asia. Completely different. And again, they have the clientele to support so many ads. I mean, so, yeah. here it's like a Dunkin' Donuts. You can't be right next door to another Dunkin' Donuts. Also, it requires a lot of money. You know, the orders that you have to place to, first of all, stock your store, second of all, to build out the Rolex boutique inside your store is not cheap. It's something that you have to be prepared for. They do all sorts of background checks on you. Right. They do financial audits on your company. It's not easy to become an AD. 
No, I, I would imagine so. And because you're an AD, what is the process? Because I know some ADs have multiple locations. Is that something you're, that you're looking to do? Always, always looking to grow, always looking to expand. It is difficult. I mean, I get offered, you know, by my representative at Rolex, hey, there's an opportunity in South Carolina. You know, if I was able to, or if I'm able to at any given point to be like, okay, I'm going to set one up down there. I'm going to put somebody that I trust in there. I definitely would do it. Currently, probably the best opportunity is buying out the existing ADs. Anybody that's retiring, anybody that's... Smaller mom and pop stores that are a little bit older, yeah. You know, so who are you going to sell to? Another Rolex AD is the best option. So your better option is to buy an existing store out to basically scale your operation. Correct. And to get more allocation. Correct. Now again, Rolex would have to approve that purchase and would have to approve me as an AD in that location. It's not as simple as, you know, just buying it and right away you're handed the AD. Okay. Watch prices today. Not only on the stainless steel pieces, the Daytonas and Sky Dwellers, gold pieces that are going for over retail, on our market at least. Why do you think that is? I think a lot of it has to do with the hype. Um, a lot of it has to do with supply and demand. There just isn't enough supply, or at least the brand makes you think there isn't enough supply. I mean, if you take a Rolex Daytona, there must be millions out there. I mean, people, everywhere you look, somebody has one, yet the price is still double retail. At the same time, retail is not a real number. I mean, it's a quality timepiece. You're paying for something that's going to last you decades. You know, it, it's not, you know, 13,000, 14,000, 15,000, 18,000. It's cheap for the watch. So yes, you, you, you can justify paying double because that retail number is no longer real. How long do you foresee this going on? As, as long as the government keeps printing money? No, honestly, I don't think that this hype is going to last for a while. But at the end of the day, Rolex is a top 10, you know, internationally known brand. I mean, that, that their, their marketing power, their branding power is unmatched. So there's always going to be quality associated with their timepieces, quality associated with the brand. As far as these crazy prices, they're going to level out. I mean, I don't think anything is going to drop. But I, was, I do think that some of those models that are not as much in demand, you're going to be able to get them lower than they are today. What is your current favorite Rolex in the lineup right now? Right now, I'm wearing a lot of the rose gold Daytona with the black dial. Okay. That I'm wearing a lot of. Um, I Actually, it's funny. I bought it for my significant other, my wife, and I was going to give it to her. And then I, once I started, you know, trying it on, I was like, you know what? Fuck it, let me keep it on for a few days, and it's been about four months so far. So I, I will give it to her at some point or another. Mine's got to be the Platinum, the, something Platinum. I think Rolex Platinum is sick. Platinum Day Date 40, pl Platinum Daytona, Platinum Daytona with the ice blue markers. That's, that's where I go. I actually, you know what I really liked? The Platinum with the olive dial Day Date. So if you get one in, I got, you got me at cost. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to leave it at a handshake there. The debt is settled. I appreciate you coming out. Thank you. Yeah, it was nice to be here and um, make sure that nobody could see my face, hear my voice. If anything comes out, I'm coming after you. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Thank you, my friend. Well, first of all, Adrian, uh, thanks for taking the time, pitching in and taking that interview. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Again, it was quick. It was easy. But I believe that it answered some basic questions that everybody uh, sort of asked from time to time. And like, you know, the whole purpose of this is don't take our word for it. Here's an actual AD that answered those questions honestly and unbiasedly. So I hope you guys enjoy that part. But back to our episode, uh, there's some new watches, there's some new hot stuff that's out there from Audemars, from Tag, from Omega, from Panerai, IWC, et cetera, et cetera. Wanted to go over a few of these models, wanted to get your thoughts on those. And I guess we can sh sort of share in. If we can have a laptop, that'd be great. Are we drinking? Okay, now that we got our laptop, there is one thing that we need to do first and foremost, because this is watches and whiskey. And whiskey. Yeah, right. so oddly enough, this is a bottle sent in by our fan. And I say our All fan right. because a gentleman by the name of Akbar from Pakistan sent this to us last week. And uh, in fact, I'm going to quote what he wrote. So Akbar wrote, hi Roman, just got done watching Whiskey and Watches. Love it as always. Since I love the show, I'm going to send you and Adrian a bottle of whiskey for me as a gift and would love for you to have it on your next show. Here it is. I'll make sure it's worthy for the show. I just wanted an anonymous cheer so I can open a nice bottle of whiskey here when I watch the next episode. I got your address online, so I'll be posting it there. Even though now I hardly drink whiskey, more of a wine guy, but we will have some while watching the show. So, Akbar, if you're watching this... Thank you very much. You, thank you, first and foremost. Pour yourself a glass. And this is 
not just the Macau, this is the rare cask, right? So once a year, they put together what they call the rare cask collection, uh, where they meticulously pick their sherry casks in order to take some of the finest batches that they've made uh, and put it in that special cask. They call it curated casks, for the lack of a better word. But uh, I do know that they use the top 1% of the stuff that they make for the uh, year to put in these. It does come in a beautiful decanter. Let's check that out and uh, let's drink it. It is definitely a beautiful, beautiful bottle. It is a yeah. beautiful bottle. Bar. Thank you very much again. Thanks, let's, bar. Let's, uh, let's have a drink. Do you honors? You got it. All right, here we go again with this, right? They always give the blind guy the, the plastic that you got unsealed. Ugh. Love that sound. Gotta love that, that sound. Hmm. This is uh, slightly stronger. Every year the proof changes slightly, but uh, this one I believe is 86 or so proof. Let's see. Yep, 80, it's 43 percent alcohol, so yeah, 86 proof. Uh, 2020 release. Let's drink this quick. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Akbar, Akbar. cheers. McCallum is just. Yeah, it's best. It's just, it's just the best. Yeah. It's just McCallum. I mean, it's so good. Good stuff. In either case. Let's talk about these new watches, right? So the first thing, the first thing I have on my list is the Audemars Piguet Double Balance Ceramic. We'll throw that up on the screen. Yeah, I'll, let, I'll let you go with that. Well, I'm happy uh, that's the first one on the list, and it's probably <laughs> my favorite one on the list. Wait, well, you can, what's, what's wrong with Ted Quarter? Uh, so it's my favorite one on the list. Uh, <laughs> basically, they kicked ass with the stainless steel version. They kicked ass with the rose gold version, and now everything they're putting out in ceramic just absolutely flies off the shelf. It's the most in-demand watch on the market today and you just simply cannot get your hands on it. There's not a single ceramic, uh, all ceramic, I should say, I saw, watch out there that doesn't sell for I saw, money. I saw one sold on the market for 275000 So for, it's almost- For the double balance. Double balance ceramic skeleton. What's that, it's like, damn yeah, triple it's retail? It's two and a half, about two and a half times retail. Well, what, what, do you remember the retail? No. I don't know, I think it's just, just over 100000 But if you think about it, uh, to set the retail that high to begin with, for what is, not supposedly that complicated of a watch if you think about it. Well, listen, if the rose gold one is set at the, today around the $100,000 mark, anything they make in ceramic is pretty much equal in retail value. Plus, it's much harder to produce. You know what I would love to see? I'd love to see a titanium version of the double balance. Light, easy to wear, would feel like nothing on your wrist and still have the look of that now, I was thinking, stainless steel. Now, I was thinking gray ceramic. If they did a gray ceramic, well, double okay, let's balance. Just, let's just go red and, and green nah, and pink. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Simple gray ceramic. I think that shit would kill it. I think the only uh, I think the only ceramic watches that are still kind of uh, lagging behind are some of the newer uh, ceramic offshores, like the blues and the greens. Yes, they are selling at least a little bit over, but they're not fetching tremendous numbers. They they're they're trading right about list, but I, I, it, it seems to be pretty easy to get at the boutiques. I think mm -hmm. there's a lot of them floating around, a lot of them are being offered around, so that kind of kills the whole the whole vibe of of premium watches. So. Tacoyer, Carrara Sport Chronograph, 160 years special edition. Uh, beautiful, beautiful watch. A couple of key elements here, unless you want to talk about them. No, you, you got it. You sure? Yeah, the tags you got. It's not. Uh, it's not hey, I, like, it's, it's I not, got nothing against tags. I know you, more, against, more I know you got you know. nothing against tags, but uh, listen, uh, paying homage. As usual, to memorable iterations of of the Carrara line. Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, this one goes back to the ones they made in the '60s. It really has that uh, ceramic Daytona appeal to it. I really uh, it they, 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 bit, they yes. bit off a lot there with the they that did, ceramic they did. bezel. Yeah, I I agree, but nevertheless they did and they didn't. It's hard not to. They, but they, but they, they didn't because this is a watch that's been around for a long time. And by the way, I, I think just can't stop looking at that Daytona bezel. <laughs> I know, it's kind of tough. <laughs> Next is the Omega Speedmaster Silver Snoopy Award 50th Anniversary. Oh boy. This is a watch that uh, everybody and their mother wants to get on the list to get. So this Omega obviously made for the 50th anniversary of the Silver Snoopy Award. Mm -hmm. Now, I did an entire video on this whole thing, guys. If you didn't catch it, I'll have Ian linking below, so we won't get into the history. Uh, let's look at this watch. I mean, the coolest thing about this watch is actually in the back. It's a good-looking watch. It is it's a good-looking watch. Very good-looking watch. Uh, I'm a big Speedy fan, right? I, mm -hmm. I'm one of those guys. I like most collectors out there that says you got if you're gonna have a collection, Omega Speedmaster is a must yep. in your collection, regardless of what it is. Just that's such an iconic watch. What a lot of these watches represents in terms of space exploration and travel and so on and so forth. Hands down, a must watch to have in your collection. Much like, let's say a Rolex Sub, right? It would be a token piece, right? Or let's say a uh, Richard Mille Crystal Turbion, right? 
<laughs> or not. <laughs> Agree to drink to that. <laughs> drink to that. So the biggest deal about the swatch is in the back. There's like a magic hand they called, and this little CSM thing uh, kind of whips around the same That's way. That's super dope. The same way that they whipped around, yep. uh, you know, to get to the moon. Uh, I will tell you this: the front of the watch to me is super sexy. Like, as much as I love AP, and as much as I love, let's say, the Blue Dial Royal Oak Chrono. Take away the Omega. Tell me that does not look better, sharper, richer in color. This is some of the shit that I wish AP did because the AP does those waffle dials. I, mean, I, know, I know you're laughing at me. I know you're laughing at me. But look, AP does those waffle. I know comparing. I know. I know you're a little superficial. I get it. But bottom line is, is put the two dials side by side. Take a, a blue Royal Oak with white sub dials. This thing will blow it out of the water. Yeah, it's great. I just like the fact that Snoopy's on there. You know, Snoopy's my man. So damn, you're shallow. So shallow. But look, I don't lie. Beautiful watch. Yes, it's going to sell through the roof. If you guys can get on the list to get this watch and buy this watch, it's going to sell through the roof. Is it going to do triple like its predecessor? Probably will. Uh, if I get my hands on one of these, I won't sell it. I will keep this watch. I don't like the strap for it. I don't like it on the strap, but I'm sure. Do they have a uh, bracelet that goes with it too? I mean, but the so. strap the strap has like the path. The strap also have Snoopy on there? No, it has like yeah, it the, the path. Of, no, it has uh -huh. like the path of the ship that oh. uh, of how how it actually happened, how they swung around to uh, get to the moon. So it does. It certainly. What's it, the retail price on it? Oh, I don't even know. Ninety six hundred. Uh, so the, uh, that's a fair price point, I think, for what that is. You're gonna see this watch. You're gonna see this watch at upwards of thirty grand. Thirty? Yeah. Well, let's check around at twenty four. I'm sure somebody already threw one up there for some stupid number, but. And if uh, our viewers watched our last video, as we know, Chrono 24 is not a great indicator but of the market price. It's for but quick, at, for but quick, it yeah. is it, it is it is a marker of which the, the market is going to go by. So yeah, so let's. We see. should just Snoopy. put it up. We should just put up there for fifty thousand and just see if we can catch somebody. I guarantee. Think? I guarantee you, somebody already did. Yeah. Twenty nine thousand. Blah 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 blah. Okay, so I was right about triple retail. I know, and all people are doing is they're following suit from the last one. They figured if the last one is selling a triple list, and people are willing to pay it. Then why I now not? like that watch a lot better. Why? Because it's twenty nine thousand. Yes. It's a ninety-six hundred dollar watch, and you gotta like it for what it is. It's an iconic watch, okay? It's an iconic watch. I, I don't disagree. All right, all right let's Snoopy's let's an move on. Character. Uh, I'll, I'll, all right, I'll let you have that one. The Richard Mille RM seventy two zero one Lifestyle Flyback Chronograph. Lifestyle Flyback Chronograph. All right, well, this is uh, probably one of my favorite releases from Richard Mille this year. Not that they do a lot of releases, but uh, it is their first in-house chronograph movement there's nothing out there on the market and it's uh released probably six months ago and there's nothing out there on the market i haven't they, seen one they, we haven't seen one live yet i've seen a rose gold one i have not seen a titanium one they did i believe release it to be a unisex watch so a man or woman can wear it it is pretty thin it's not a big case size it's not as big as the 1103 case size but i think but i think the dial is beautiful i think aesthetically the watch is absolutely sick so Kudos to Richard Mille again. Okay, well, let's get a little geeky for a second. Please do. Uh, you you know, like getting geeky. It's a double tilting pinion clutch system. Uh, again, Can you explain what that does a little bit for the viewers? Uh, hell no, I'm not gonna go. Okay. I'm not gonna go into that. Starting price, they're saying is surprisingly affordable at $188,000. Sold. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to sell it no. to you. What's the? Do you know the market on this thing? Right yeah. Now? So I saw the Rose Gold one bring uh, close to 500,000 for a chronograph, That's ladies right. and gentlemen. That's uh, right. Looks wise, personally, I like the rose gold the way it looks. Uh, I'm not too crazy about the titanium, and I'm not too crazy about the layout of the dial. So it not. is a little funky. It, it is. Little it little is a little funky. funky, but nevertheless, it's with, gonna, it's gonna with do Richard well Mille, this, yeah. nevertheless, with Richard Mille, it's, well. like, it's gonna do well. So, Richard Mille. Next was the Jaeger La Culture Master Ultra Thin Turbion Moon. Personally, to me. Nothing different from your typical year. Yeah. You, you look this watch. You look at this watch from afar. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't strike me as anything ultra special or ultra different, and so on and so forth. Good looking watch, nonetheless, though. I mean, listen. Definitely. I think I think I'm just a sucker for moon phases. Something, something about moon phases. Put the, put them on dial. I just I love it. I don't know. And yet, it's probably one of the most useless complications in the watch today. Like you, you don't like looking down your wrist. I saying, do like oh, looking is down it a my full moon today. I do, I do. look down. Then you go outside, I do. I do. Then you, put, then you put a new dollar bill up to a new moon. And oh yeah, that's, that's like a Russian uh, 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 what do you call it thing. It works sometimes. T tell tell us about the superstition, please. Do tell the viewers. It's not a superstition. It's actually true facts. My mom told oh. me. My mom told me to do it ever since I was a kid. New moon, you put a dollar up there. Um, and it's supposed to bring you good luck. So, no. what better way to no, know no. when and a when full you, moon is? When you put, when there's a new moon, you, sh you whatever money you have in your pocket, you show it to it. So then, when it gets full, your pocket was get full. That's the idea behind it. But it, it's the same action. 
So what you know? Okay, whatever. <laughs> I said, put, put a dollar up to the moon, and you just said it in a fancier way. Thank you very much. Uh, you're Let's welcome. have a drink. <laughs> Guys, in case you haven't um, noticed by now, Roman, um, he, he's a very good speaker, and uh, he just always needs to get his point across. So whether you say something, he's got to say something on top of it and get the last oh, word in. Absolutely. So I got to get that the was, last that word. Was, that was case in point perfect right there. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I think that I think they need to bring a camera around the office. Just do like a just, office just, blog? Just, yeah, just, just, just to see. That's just going to be me yeah. talking, though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Speaking of blogs, I'm finally uh, going to do my first vlog in God knows how long. So Where are you going to do it? I'm, go I'm going to Miami. Okay. Uh, I, me and my wife decided that the, the theme of the trip was get the hell away from the kids, finally, and room service. Like, that Ooh. was the theme. Where are you guys? I, I said, you know what? We're, we're staying at the St. Regis in Ball Harbor. And nice. I, said, I said, you know what? Away from the kids, away from everybody. Five star amenities. I just want to do nothing for five days. Of course, I won't be doing nothing. I'll be running around with a camera. And Ball Harbor Mall is right across the street. Unfortunately, Always, unfortunately, unfortunately for, for you. Fortunately for your wife. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's see how much this thing uh, retails for. Eighty-one thousand. Eighty-one thousand five hundred. And I talked about. And I talked about. Uh, I talked about you know affordability of brands like Jaeger and brands like IWC. Is that a they, thicker case size? Or or am I crazy? Just looking at that picture. Is it ultra thin? Uh, yep, ultra. case size is uh, 41 and a half millimeters by 12, by 12 millimeters. So that's actually that's actually pretty thin. I guess one of the things that are worth mentioning: the moon phase is done for uh, it shows the northern hemisphere, but if you see the hand on the, mm -hmm. if you see the if you see the other hand, mm -hmm. it'll show it actually shows the other hemisphere. The data is done as sort of that tachymeter scale. If you look around it and look at the so that's not a second hand. That's a date indicator. That's a date indicator. Oh, very so cool. So what the cool yeah. part about this is: look at the data indicator. It goes from mm -hmm. one to gets to about 14, you see that little fast forward mm -hmm. button? So the date will actually jump and go past the turbine, and that was done maliciously. maliciously so, it doesn't it so it doesn't stay so on the turbine. So it doesn't That's stay on the turbine and it shows up the turbine. Again, 81,500, this is not cool. a watch that you have to pick up at retail, this is a watch you can get. You Eventually. can get, you can, yep. get uh, you, can, you, can, you can order, you can order this, unless they make it, but you can exclusive, you can order this from an authorized dealer, you can get a discount on this watch. Again, how many Jaegers are out there today selling over mm -hmm. list zero, right? But nevertheless, again, value for the money. And I talked about this all the time, right? Jaeger, IWC, they make their own stuff. They don't, they don't have to get out there and buy turbines and uh, buy certain movements or yeah. parts of the movements, and they're able somebody to bring you something like this. When I first got into affordable. the business, somebody didn't mention that Jaeger look cool. There is the watchmaker's watch. Yes. So. Yeah, it is. It is indeed. Yeah. All right. Next, let's talk about. So next, let's <laughs> talk about the IWC Top Gun SFTI edition. First of all. SFTI, you know what it stands for? Well, it has something to do with military, I'm sure. Strike Fighter Training Program. It goes back to uh, actually Vietnam, where you know Vietnam was always considered to be sort of that failed uh, military operation. A training program was created to basically ensure that the pilots are better equipped, both from a, from a uh, piloting and a tactical perspective, right? Uh, it's still ongoing today, actually, believe it or not, also known as the Top Gun. Come on, Maverick. Black ceramic, not surprised. Top Gun patch, not surprised. The fighter jet on the on the bottom of the second hands, also not surprised. So this this watch was actually made in 2018 at first, but it was made exclusively for the graduates of the Navy Fighter School. But this year they decided to change that because again you couldn't get those unless you went to their schools, and I highly doubt any of those guys sold their watches, unless I don't know if they were given to them or if they were if they actually bought them and they was available to, because what happens if they didn't want to buy them? I guess. It must so have been. It, watch it, it, it must have coming out of the Navy. Or yeah, those, no, those, guys, those, those guys make a decent amount of money. But long story short, this year they decided to introduce this watch and make it available to the public. And there you have it, right? 1,500 pieces, green textile strap. You can get on the leather strap, like cera it. ceramic case, your jet fighter on the bottom of your second sand. Love the red accents. It's like simple, it's very legible as a pilot's watch should very be. Military. Big, big, very military. Yeah, like very Large markers. Again, nothing different from what we've seen from my WC not, before. Not, not we've seen a lot of these. I top do love. Ceramics. The buttons. I like that little touch on the buttons, that little red ring around yep. every chronograph button. Again, important. This is not a one-to-one -one reproduction of the one they made for 2018 for the actual fighter pilots. For actual fighter pilots, although I kind of wish they did that. You know, that way, average Joe can have that same watch. But then, probably the guys that already have them won't, won't feel less special. So what if kind you of watch me. do you think they would make for the Navy SEALs? So. I mean, if we're gonna go with brand, we're gonna go with. I mean, because IWC is historically known for like airborne. Right. So Panerai like is probably going to have to be my choice. Uh, for Navy SEALs, but then again, Rolex can play the same role just the same. I mean, if you want to talk, then you got Jaeger that can, you know, the master compressor divers, you know, 
Blanc Pond uh, has a lot of cool dive watches, so sky's kind of the limit, if you ask me. But if I have to pick one brand for the Navy SEALs, probably have to go with Panerai. You? For the elite Navy SEALs, you're going to go with Panerai. You're going to give them Richard Mille? Hell yeah. <laughs> Let's, cheers you remember, cheers to our armed yeah. forces. Listen, you're, you're talking about, uh, you know, this watch becoming a tool rather yeah. than showing off. So Richard Mille is not going to be as good of a tool. You, you experienced G-Force in the military? Mm -mm. No? On planes, you do. I wasn't a pilot. What? I wasn't a pilot. How about when you like jump out of a plane? The G force when you're falling, uh, bro. When you jump out of a plane, you don't need a f***ing watch. You need a <laughs> diaper. Right? <laughs> Let me tell you something. <laughs> anyway, Hublot Big Bang MP11 Red Magic. Ooh. What the hell? Who put a Hublot on this list? Hublot? What the? F like, it's like I'm, you know, I love Hublot. Uh, and I know you guys, a lot of you guys make fun of Hublot, yeah. but at the end of the day... Why did that ha why, why did that happen, do you think? You know what, what it is? What, what, it, what is it about Hublot that turns so many people off? Social media. I think that Hublot gets a bad rap simply for how many limited editions they make. It seems like every watch they release is a limited edition. But if you think about it, so is Panerai. Panerai, Panerai did that for a long, long time and nobody complained, right? And I feel it finally lost its appeal. Well, you know, what you, I, go, you, know, you know what I, you know what I think? I think Hublot and... Again, we can talk about red magic, blue magic, green magic. It doesn't really matter. We don't have to get into a particular watch if you want to talk about Hublot. I think Hublot is doing a great job in marketing. South America. What do you think? Would, would you say that... That's Hublot, the number one market by far. Number one market by for, far, for Hublot. By far. Why do you think that is? Well, first off, just if you watch a football match or a soccer match. Soccer culture in South America is probably the biggest if you ask it's me. religion. It's religion, yeah. right? And guess what? Hublot is all over the place. Strategically placing your product and creating a market for yourself via, uh, via very, very creative marketing. Giving these pieces to soccer players, giving these, peoples, uh, giving these pieces to boxers. I mean, Floyd Mayweather, you know what I mean? That's them going after the American market because most fans of Floyd Mayweather are going to be stateside, right? It's the same thing that Richard Mille is doing, is giving their watches to key figures. Look. But even, even still with the Richard Mille branding, th they tactfully like place their signs, billboards, whatever you want to call it, at a F1 event. They'll play at a polo event. You know, the, the, the average F1 um, spectator or anybody who uh, participates in F1 has money. Okay, so okay. I agree with you. And guess what? I went to an F1 event in Monaco yeah. one time. You know what it cost me to rent out a balcony the size of there, this table? There, that's what I'm saying. 25,000 yeah. euros. Right. To rent out a, a balcony, not an apartment, but access to a yeah. balcony the size of this table where I was there with five other people to be able to watch this event live. Yeah. Let's talk about tennis. Yeah. You know, and I and yeah, listen, it's it's a rich man's sport. Absolutely. Same goes with golf. Golf, there's yeah, exactly. There's, there's a lot of soccer, golf. however, soccer, however, an average Joe can go to a yes. soccer event, right? Yes. Maybe it's a yes. huge game that's sold out and the tickets are still yeah. expensive, but an average Joe can't go to a soccer You've event, which it. is why they make so many more of these pieces because their crowd is bigger. Yeah. Look, I've said it before. There's a reason why Hublot literally put the same exact factory next to the existing factory to produce more watches. They wouldn't do that if they weren't successful. They're going to continue being successful. And you know what? At the end of the day, they make good-looking watches. They do make good-looking watches. I, I, I think that the access to their watches is just too easy, easily to get, even their limited editions. I mean, you can always get a Hub like whatever Hublot you want for the most part. I agree. But here's the difference. Two different business models. Like Richard Mille, yeah, you they, can choose. They, they, they go choose, quantity over quality. Choose, you, you I'm sorry, choose, but hold on a second. But their watches are also quality. Yeah, I'm not have saying Have you had no, many? Have you had many people call you back and say, "Hey, my Hublot no, broke. There's an issue." I, I haven't say no. So quality wise, I would say that, AP. A, AP actually, unfortunately, lately has been more problematic than Hublot. More problematic, not lately. I, I think just overall. Exactly. So, so most. So if you want to talk about quality, the quality is there. It's just again, it's not quantity over quality. It's just quantity. The La Ferraris are sick. Oh, the LaFerraris. LaFerraris are sick. Absolutely. The yes. Crystal LaFerrari, all day. Yeah. All day. Like anyway, enough about new watches. Uh, let's talk about, oh, they. you know what they put on here? Mm. They put on here Watch Wars. So, oh, right. so if you guys I remember a lot. Uh, if you remember, if you. If, drink, not a toast. I'm done. You're quick, man. This is what, ha this, this, this is what happens for, for the guys. I love this. Yeah. All right, can you play right, drink, <laughs> The other day, me and uh, me and Mike, we had a uh, 136 proof bourbon. One glass of that, I was just like, I think it was a McKenna. I don't remember what the name of it exactly. I think it was a McKenna. But anyway, long story short, uh, Watch Wars. Ian, could you do me a favor? Because me and Adrian, we did, me, Adrian, Ian, and a couple other videographers spent a lot of time taping that intro, went out to an actual boxing gym. So as a oh, reminder, yeah. Ian, can you good. please play that intro? Because I love the intro. Good times, that's right.
I hope you guys enjoyed that little flashback, but I see no reason for us to lose that. So what do you bring? Let's go watch wars. I brought with me. Well, we got two watches each, by the way. All right. What's your first watch? Audemars Piquet, Royal Oak Perpetual and Rose Gold with the blue dial. Your turn. Market price. Hundred fifteen thousand. Depending on condition. It's anywhere from a hundred to hundred. Hundred to hundred fifteen today. What, stri condition. what strikes you most about this watch? Better off you ask me what doesn't strike me about this watch, which is absolutely nothing. Okay. I think that this is the best looking perpetual calendar on the market. Period. Bar none. You know what? I'm going to move this laptop. Let's show this watch off to the camera first. We don't need this anymore. You said this is the best looking perpetual. Absolutely. Yeah. I will argue that fact, but that's not with a watch that I brought to, that okay. I brought to combat that watch. Maybe we should have. Here's played. my here's my issue. Here's my issue with this watch. And yes, it's the most popular model out there. It's the Royal Oak. It's the rose gold. Yeah. It's the coveted blue dial that everybody thinks. First of all, I think that watch is a bit. Put this right here. Uh, I think the watch becomes a little bit unreadable due to the very dark dial at a glance. You can't tell what's what, or maybe I'm just blind. You're but coming from a guy who's wearing a skeletonized one, well, you really can't. See. If you want to talk, if you want to talk, if you want to talk about legibility and a better looking Royal Oak, let me give you a quick wrist check. I'm wearing the Platinum Royal Oak Perpetual. It's a predecessor to this right, well, guy. Well, don't put that against this, mine. That's I'm not. That's I'm not, not the watch I'm, for. I'm not. I know. I, 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 know, I know. It's fair. not fair. This is something that happened fair. in my wrist. But I'm just saying, as an argument, looks wise, I think this is a much better looking Perpetual. And believe it or not, it's actually more legible, even though it's all skeletonized. The way they did the sub dials, they're actually very, very legible, unlike those. But that's not what I'm fighting with. What I'm going to fight with is bang for your dollar. And I'm going to put the Royal Oak Turbion Chronograph up against the Perpetual Calendar. And the reason I'm going to... Why is it... Why why to you is a Turbion... Because look, there's, like a, there's, a non, there's an unwritten rule when it comes to watches, all right? There's... When it comes to... I, if you put complications in an order... I think it's totally... Yeah. Most complicated, most coveted, most prestigious, yeah. it's going to go minute repeater, it's going to go turbion, it's going to go perpetual You would calendar. say minute repeater over turbion? Yes. Why? Because it's a more... Why, why is minute repeater a more... Okay, this is more something I should ask a watchmaker. Why is a minute repeater more difficult to produce in a perpetual calendar? Something that literally reads... Day, date, month, year, leap year, indicator, all at once. You forgot your favorite. Moon face. Moon face. Of course. Of course. <laughs> moon face. Moon face. Again, well, I'm not. Gonna, I'm not going to get into the. Nuts, like, I'm not going to get into saying? the nuts and bolts arguments. I will tell you this: that historically, if you ask nine out of ten people that yeah. are watch guys, yeah. be they watchmakers, watch dealers, or watch collectors, yeah. whatever it might be, they will all sort of put the minute repeater turbion sort of sort of as a toss up usually, but they will usually you'll hear minute repeater turbion perpetual calendar. Then it goes down to chronograph. Enough, my favorite brand doesn't use two out of those three complications. Which brand is that? Your favorite brand doesn't use... Oh, that would be Richard Mille. Yeah. Right. No, Richard Mille doesn't have a minute repeater. Or a perpetual calendar. Yet. I, they're not going to. Why do you say I that? think because they follow suit of racing so much that it's just a function that they don't need. That makes sense. If you really think about so, it. So, again, I'm going to go... I'm going to argue with this, and you guys decide, comment below who you think wins this argument. I'm going to go with a turbion chronograph so, over so, a perpetual so you're calendar. So, ba you're basically saying that... Royal Oak, rose gold. Yeah. Just keep it put on the bracelet if need be. Yes. And I'm going to use the argument that a turbion is just... For so many years has been that status symbol. Perpetual calendar has never achieved status symbol like a turbine has. Even a minute repeater hasn't achieved that status. I, when they, people see that little window on your wrist, they, they just know. That's that's old news. Nowadays, nowadays, if you look at perpetual calendars for tur and and not all the way through, but let's say for AP, like the AP perpetuals are bringing more money than a lot of the turbions are. Yeah, today. this when, is more expensive be, than this. When it used to be I way agree. different. So now, now if you have the Royal Oak Perpetual on your list, that's more coveted than a, than a turbion. Nobody Again, really cares if you if you, ta hold on, if you take this perpetual calendar and you comppare it to the Royal Oak Turbion Rose Gold, the Royal yeah. Oak Turbion Rose Gold is more expensive than this. Slightly. When, when you start when you start getting into well, things listen, what, like what, ceramics and this, yeah, I get it. If they made a ceramic turb. Skeleton. Ceramic turf skeleton. They In, have already. Royal there's a Royal Oak skeleton. There's a Royal Oak yeah. skeleton ceramic, the black one that has that starburst though. Correct, which is which is less money than the <coughs> ceramic double balance, which is less money or equal to a ceramic perpetual calendar today. If both knew about the same price. The ceramic turbine, okay, one ninety five. But look, the retail price on a Royal Oak Turbine, let's say rose gold. Retail's are always gonna be higher than a turbine. Yeah, one hundred hundred sixty eight thousand to I think this is now a hundred thousand, mm -hmm. and yet they're pretty much market price. The turbion a little bit more. I still can't figure out what why that is. You know what? Let's agree to disagree. We'll let the we we'll let the audience yeah. decide who wins this one. What else did you bring? Oh, a Richard. The RM twenty eight titanium diver. The dog of all Richard Mills. 
Well, Arm no. 16. Arm 16. Yeah, the second probably. dog. The yeah, second dog. Yeah. But definitely a watch that's going to come up. Um, I think that this watch is cool. To say the least, and I think for, for for the value of it, it's it's one of the more affordable Richard Meals on the market. It is. I mean, it doesn't the, the, have the the tonneau know, case shape that everybody uh, familiarizes with. Yeah, anytime Richard you go out of the norm with shapes on any brand that's hot or not hot is really irrelevant. It's, I think I, I I just think it's a super fun watch, and it looks big, but it's actually very comfortable. To wear. It is wearable. I very agree. Wearable. I've worn that watch, and it is definitely wearable. What's so, the market value on this? Uh, so this one in titanium with the full set market value is sixty five thousand dollars in rose versus gold. the retail of. Uh, I don't remember what the retail on the twenty eighth were, but it's somewhere around there now because they have certainly gone up in value. I mean, we used to pick these off like thirty five, forty thousand dollars. Yeah, I remember. Now, but they've gone up in value due to the hype yeah. of everything else. Yeah. Uh, so, and what do you get with that? I mean, what do you get with this watch? With this, you get time. I mean, it, you get time. Just, uh, Dayton. You get the, you get you get date and yeah. time, right? Well, it's and that's sixty-five thousand dollars. Yeah. How about I show you something you get for forty-five thousand dollars? How about a Patek Old School fifty-fifty-nine? Hey man, I like perpetual I, retrograde. I love perpetual. I love the perpetual retrograde. It's just too small. I mean, I like listen. It. If I compare the two side yeah. by side, obviously two, two this, this thing this thing is a monster. That watch serves a way different. Function but again, I'm gonna watch, go back. I'm gonna go back on value. Here's a brand that's arguably the Rolls Royce of all yes. brands out there. Although that argument now, if you start it's comparing, the Rolls Royce drop value way quicker than the Patek does. <laughs> that is true. But <laughs> if we're gonna talk about if we're gonna talk about bang for your dollar, all day every day for thirty percent less, would I go with a watch from one of the from the most prestigious name out there if you think about it. Yeah. Right? Ar arguably again some may argue that yeah, but, Paddock's number one. but Paddock is right. number one in terms number of one. prestige, right? Yep. Complication, retrograde calendar. I mean your favorite uh, complication, moon phase. So I'm gonna argue that yes, they're completely two different watches. Yes, completely different market. This is for more conservative, perhaps yep. somebody that's a bit older, yep. although you do find a lot of young kids out there yeah. wearing yeah, pieces absolutely. of this and will never put on a clunker like that, right? And that is a clunker. It may be comfortable to wear, but it's a big clunker. Yeah. Uh, the only, I, I guess I guess the only argument you can put forth. Say pre-COVID, if you were to go to a nightclub, which one would you rock? Which one would you pick up the women with? Probably the Richard Mille. Agreed. But again, now that we're both married, we're well, both married. Yeah, I, was yeah, about to say that. I think I think it's back to the yeah. I think it's back to conservative I know, I know stuff. My like the, I know my wife was going to watch the segment. And make it. <laughs> <laughs> Watch your ass. All right, guys. Uh, rather than seeing who won on this one, why don't you comment below and see which one would you pick? Would you go with the RM28 Diver? Or would you go with the Perpetual Retrograde Paddock 5059 at a at 30% less? What else we got? Assigning a watch to a celebrity. Ooh. The celebrity calls you. They want to watch and they need your recommendation of what to get. They don't want to spend outside their means or what they're worth. Huh? Wait, what? Makes no sense. The celebrity calls you. They want to watch. They have means. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. But let's see. Okay. Number one on the list, I have Snoop. What watch would I assign to Snoop? Yes. That Omega Snoopy. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I didn't even think about that one. Yeah. I right, I'm gonna go with that's a, that's a ooh, that's a good one. Hard to beat. Uh, that is hard to beat. I mean, Snoop Dogg, Snoopy watch. I, I get that. I get that. But uh, maybe, I mean, maybe in like a green color, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> what are you trying to imply? He likes to smoke a lot of pot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah, sure. uh, so let's talk about let's let's uh, uh, let's stereotype, yeah. right? Uh, one of the most iconic hip hop figures out there, yes. right? Hip hop brought us the culture of diamond watches, ice style yeah. watches, busted down, busted down watches. I think what I would try to do is I would try to show Snoop, and I don't know if he owns, I guess we should look and see, his, I don't know if there's a video out there about his collection. I don't know if he owns Bust Downs or doesn't own Bust Downs or what he is all about when it comes to watches, zero clue to be honest with you. Uh, I would probably try to show him the value between a Bust Down versus an original uh, diamond watch. And that original diamond watch to me would probably be the ultimate, the baguette offshore on a bracelet, all baguettes. You and, you, know, and, you, no. and you think he would sit there and take all that information in? I, it's not the point. I would just show him the watch and uh, and be like, "Hey, here's a legit chandelier actually, that's actually, made by." AP. I could actually see him wearing um, you, you know that you know that Hugh, going back to Hugh Blow, <laughs> that piece that's like, uh, it looks like it's on like a piece of, not the fabric, but like the the, the wool, not the wool, the, the like the fluff. The fur, the fur, the fur. But that's a ladies' you know? piece. I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I know. But Snoop, uh, okay, Snoop's okay. always coming in minks and stuff. Hold on, what is that called? It's, it's, called, uh, it's something to do with Aspen, mountains. Aspen. Aspen. No, yeah. no, no, Aspen was the white ceramic one. I did. I actually showed that one on one of my videos. Maybe Ian can pull it up. But it's got like a fur cup. Yeah, yeah. yeah but get that. But get diamonds. Yeah. 
That's that would be the snoot, that would be the snoot watch. Yeah. But then it would have to be mink, not that false fur. Yeah, whatever, whatever the false fur. All right. is. Anyway, uh, yeah, we just kind of stereotype Snoop. Sorry about that. Hands down, one of your biggest fan. I think Doggy Style is in my top three albums all time. Top three. Top three. Damn man. Top three albums all time. All time. All time. All time. All time. All time. All right. So let's not get into that. Tom Brady. Tom Brady. That's a switch. I'm actually voting for Tom. I'm actually rooting for him to win a Super Bowl. I am too. He was an arch nemesis when he was with the Patriots. Yeah, but, but I kind of want the boy to win. Listen, you got to respect the man. The man. Oh, you got to respect the man. And he's speaking of respecting him, what kind of respectful watch would you put on his wrist? Now I'm thinking. He is, he is sponsored too. by Tag, which I, mm, eh, mm. you know, no, it, it doesn't you know, matter. It, tag, it, Tom Brady, Tag is such a Tom Brady watch. You know, it's just like. Are there any like, goat themed watches out there? Goat. Yeah, like greatest of all time. Anybody have a watch with a goat out there? I mean, Rolex is the greatest of all time if you want to go that route. So you're saying you would put a Rolex on his wrist? Yeah, it's some, you know. Which one? Like a, Tom, well, it doesn't Tom, really matter. Tom, you, Brady's, you just, Tom Brady's a Daytona. You know, you think you think he should yeah. you think he should have a Daytona? Just gets better with time. Oh, I see what you did. Let me think about this. I don't know if I can top Rolex because I think you're right. I think, especially with the comparison to Roger, I think. And Rolex being sort of that goat in terms of performance, I would yeah. say, which in yeah. turn probably would translate to sales and popularity, yeah. right? Ooh, that's gonna be tough. I guess the closest thing I could come to is a paddock. Paddock's good, you know. Yeah. Paddock being sort of also that goat from a different perspective, yeah. you know. Fifty-two oh eight. Fifty-two oh eight. Yeah. Yeah, fifty-two oh eight. Not too flashy. Makes Not a point. Flashy. All right. Or we we actually agreed on something. Yeah. Marilyn Manson. Marilyn Manson. Marilyn Manson. He's the guy that took out both of his bottom ribs that's true. so that he can da- go down on himself. Supposedly, that's a that's true story. True. I don't know if that's true. I don't know, but if, if, I, if that happened to me, I don't know if I'd leave the house. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, so here's a guy who most people Comment probably, below. <laughs> don't. Please don't. Well, I just set myself up for that one. Like, but don't uh, unsubscribe. <laughs> but, don't, but don't share. Uh, so Marilyn Manson, I guess I'll go first. He's, he's a weird guy. I mean, I, I don't. I hate to stereotype him, but he's a weird fucking guy. He's actually a very intelligent guy. I never said he wasn't intelligent. Yeah, I think he's just weird. Anybody that has a surgery to remove two bottom. Not me. He's yo. Know, he's. I mean, he you know, yeah. he's weird, right? And he very, you know, a lot of makeup, dark nails, very dark. Got one for very, you. Very, very. Got one for you. RM sixty nine erotica. I don't see him. That whole goth vibe that he's got I, I, just, it's, it's I don't not, see it I, I, I just don't see it I see something I see something with a skeleton with, with bones and, and, and not the RM69 erotica I see him you in, a sardine? no I see him with the RM skulls skulls good one skull right skulls like a black one. skull yeah, uh, they were, they made a black TPT skull right? Well, well, they they made a bunch of different skulls. Uh, but it would masks, have to be black masks too it'll be an RM skull with one eye a different color than the other you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm. Did we just come up with that together? Did I come up with that or did you come up with that? Because I can't tell. I think we both did. I think Cheers. we both did. All right. <laughs> we'll drink to that. Guys, comment below who you th- what watch you would pick for Snoop, Tom Brady, and Marilyn Or what Manson. watch would you pick for me and Roman Shaw? What watch would you pick for me? What watch would I pick for you? Yeah. Careful with your next words. Well, you are a celebrity in my eyes. You always uh, have been. Well, watch I'll, what uh, I pick for you. I mean, I got. I'll I skip g- the fame. I'll keep the fortune. I know, but my my. I mean, my pick for you is going to be. It's going to be uh, the Nadal. Term. All right. Because All right. I know right. your love for tennis. I know yeah. your love for the man. Uh, if Roger Federer was, uh, you know, I wish Roger Federer had uh, Richard Mille as well, but he's a Rolex guy. But I have to go with a, a Richard Mille. What would you pick for me? Romain Jerome. <laughs> <laughs> Romain <Bruh>. for Roman. <laughs> man, you're one of a kind. I would give you. The one of one, Grand Complication Grandmaster Chime, this the the steel one, thirty one million dollars. You really want me to have my hand cut Hell off, yeah. right? Oh yeah. I definitely would certainly go with that, and I'll tell you why I agree with him because I'm a big nuts and bolts guys. You know, part <laughs> of my part of my passion for collecting antique guns is not the gun aspect of it; it's the mechanics of it. You know, I like to take them apart, see they work, how they evolved through time, going back to you know twelve hundred BC all the way out to today. And, and when it comes to nuts and bolts and mechanics, I think that watch is definitely ultimate. Oh, so, well, so definitely, absolutely. it's and, not gonna happen. And but, next, and ne- but and next, thanks. And next time they auction one off, they should invite you to do the auction because you're. Very, what's what's the what's the term? Hey, we're gonna start beating a five and a half, man. Five and a half. What? What, what's the term? Auctioneers. 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 Yeah, just like, that's what it's called. Yeah, auctioneers. Auctioneers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cattle rattle. Cattle yeah. rattle. That's yeah. it. Uh, <laughs> Last but not least, you know we guys have to, you know we have to do the video reaction. Oh, oh that's your boy. Yeah, Conor McGregor. 
I know he recently bought two watches from Jake and Phil. One was a Shinomiya, the other yeah. one was the Erotic, yeah. and I think everybody, the internet is blowing up with this yeah. Erotica watch. Let's check it out. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love this watch. I mean, if anybody can pull it off, I, obviously, uh, Yo, if there, McGregor can. If there, is there anything about price on this watch? What the uh, retail was. And look at the comments. If what, I had the money, piece of shit. That if I had the money, I still wouldn't get this gaudy ass piece of shit. Ah, uh, bullshit, right? What was it? The boiler room. Anybody tells you that the money is the root of all evil, look at the fucking smile on my face, right? And that's and that's <laughs> yeah. and that's the answer I give to a lot of the haters. But look, in reality, very complicated watch. This is and and people out there looking at this as a gaudy watch, the first thing you have to look at is the fact that this is a very complicated watch. This is a minute repeater that also puts on a mechanical scene. Something that, and I have, yeah, yeah. Something that uh, you know, uh, Ulysses Nardine is very famous for, right? What I like about this one is that when you depress the minute repeater lever, the window opens up, so yeah. you don't see the couple screwing until you actually set off the minute repeater. Now, Definitely who, a conversation Come on, piece. man, if you're walking around that watch, you better believe that lever's <laughs> down always. <laughs> but you can't, it's a minute repeater. You actually have to, you can't do that. So. Look, my, my initial reaction is good for you, Connor. I think yeah. that's a sick watch. I'm a big fan of diamond watches. This will get attention when you walk into any room, and if it doesn't, then you can press the lever and even get more yeah. attention. I mean, this is a watch that keeps on giving as far do you as think, I'm concerned. What do you think? Do you think, what do you think he paid? He definitely didn't pay lists for it, but at cost, would you say? Well, here's the, here's the thing is that cost is a, it's a vague item. Well, I mean, if, if you're what, dealing, what they if, said is cost. If you're right? dealing directly with a manufacturer, because are they looking at the pure production cost of this watch in terms of diamonds, gold, and movement, et cetera? Or are they now looking and taking everything into consideration of what it costs them to hold a boutique on 57th Street or marketing and things of that nature? Well, let's say, that, let's say I don't know if it was an AD or, or boutique in Abu Dhabi or Dubai. I don't know where he got it at their cost. I'm I don't think he got it from a boutique or a reseller. I think this came from straight. Jacob, right? I, 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 if I had yeah. to guess, this probably came from Jacob. Uh, and I'm not gonna be one of the haters. I'm gonna nah, say good for you, Connor. I think it's a cool ass watch. And I don't think those watches get enough love. That I would wear that watch. I would yeah, wear, I that, wear watch. that watch. Too. I talked about erotica watches in one of my previous episodes. Somebody asked me on a Q and A. Being a father of three uh, is, I would go with an erotica watch with the erotic scene is in the back, right? We've seen plenty of those from various brands. I just. What do you mean in the back? In the back of the watch. There's a lot of erotic watches where the so actual scene. Where they actually. Well, actually yeah, we have to take the watch off in order to see the erotic scene take place. What if, what, you, what, what if you flip it over? Whatever it might be. You know what Call it, like, whatever it might be. Kid, but, kids but, go, but, to, but kids they, go to sleep. The issue. The no. issue. The issue with me is that again, I would have a hard time explaining to my five-year-old to say, "Hey, daddy, what are those two guys doing on your <laughs> dial?" You know what I mean? Like it's just, it's just not going to happen, right? The wrestling, son. Uh, yeah, the wrestling. exactly. The wrestling. Uh, but with a watch like this, the erotic scene doesn't come alive unless you literally depress yeah, yeah. the minute repeater lever, and the only thing you see prior to that is you see two doves up top. So, uh, oh, swans. I think those are not doves. They're swans. Uh, and uh, that's a watch I wouldn't mind wearing. Me too. Touche. Touche. Cheers to that. All right. Hey, Connor. Connor, good luck this weekend. And congratulations. Well, that, uh, I think that's it. Wraps I, think, it up. I think that wraps it up for us today. Guys, I hope you yep. enjoyed today's episode. Uh, I hope you liked the little AD interview we did. Something different, something I don't think anybody has ever done, actually. I don't think probably I not. I, I mean, again, I don't. I don't know. I'm sure some of that stuff is out there. Anything, anything can be found on YouTube, as they say, as on Google. But I hope you enjoy today's episode. Some suggestions, right? I mean, because we do come up with uh, we do come up with these creative ideas. A lot of these ideas come from our marketing time. A shout out to Alex and Nick on this. Speaking of Nick, look what he got me today. Well, you too, you too young. How many of you guys remember this <coughs> guy? What? Wait, I'm gonna put it on camera first, then I'll show it to you. This is an energy drink, All right. but this is not just any energy drink. This is a positive energy drink. I'm All gonna give right. you a hint. Just a happy little bush right here. It's a happy little bush it lives right there. I know there's a little bird flying in from the side. I don't know. I don't remember. You know who this guy is? No. <laughs> oh, you're so Bob, fucking young. Bob Ross? You're so young. Know. This is a guy that Oh, wait a sec. This wait, is the, the guy, painter. The painter on oh, Channel yeah, 12, yeah, yeah. right. And I guess somebody, I don't know how legal this is. I guess they must have bought the rights. And they call this the positive energy drink. I'm not going to try this because I think energy drinks are poison. <laughs> but I thought this was the coolest thing. So, Nick, shout out to you. I'm going to I'm gonna leave this guy in the studio. I'm going to put him right up here. Got to have Bob Ross right up there. Just a happy little energy drink right there. Positive energy drink right there. Guys, again, thanks, again, thanks a lot for tuning in. As always, like, share, subscribe. Subscribe. 
uh, comment below or email us with any suggestion, Adrian at LuxuryBazaar.com or Robin Sharp at LuxuryBazaar.com for the upcoming shows. We'll send those suggestions all directly. To, as a matter of fact, you can email Nick directly or you can email Nick or Alex directly. We'll put their emails up there as well. Yeah. Good luck to Alex and Nick from all the emails. If you got any suggestions, because it's not rehearsed, it's not surprised. So sometimes we actually get stumped when we read these scripts. Uh, and, uh, well, I don't get stumped really, not often, but sometimes. But other than that, guys, we're going to see you. Uh, Next week for more watches right. of whiskey. Cheers. Uh, I'm out. You're out. Uh, I'm out. Till next time. Till next time. <laughs>